Okay, everyone, thank you. And today I'm super excited, I'm joined by Thomas Wren, who is a sales leader, has his own sales enablement training program called the Empowered Seller. So super excited. We're going to cover some really interesting topics there about how to get into you know, the peak performance of selling, um, Thomas's history in sales, how he got into it, some of the challenges he faced and how, where he is today. Um, so yeah, super cool. Really looking forward to this one. Um, Thomas, I'll let you start with a quick introduction to yourself, um, and then we can go from there. Yeah, thank you, Gotham. Well, absolute pleasure to be here. Thanks for having me as a guest. Um, so as you say, Thomas Wren, founder of The Empowered Seller. Uh, we're obsessed with performance, sales professionals. We're having a chat just before this, mindset, <clears throat> uh, peak performance, all these type of things. That's what I'm obsessed with. So that's what I do. I'm fortunate enough, privileged to coach some of, and in my biased opinion, some of the greatest salespeople in the world, in tech sales and SaaS sales and beyond. Let's just get straight into it. Super fascinating. I looked at kind of your work background. You know, you were at companies like Riverbed for quite a while, great company. And you started in sales, you're in sales for a long time. And I think, you know, even within your kind of LinkedIn profile, um, you were told by a doctor, you know, to quit sales. Mm -hmm. um, what, what happened there? What's the background to that? Um, super fascinating. Yeah, sales is so stressful. So I'm just super interested in, in that in that story. Yeah, so it's a long story, and I, I I will try and keep it in the confines <laughs> of this podcast. But uh, yeah, I, I say this: anyone listening, any founders, any salespeople, we all know this is a stressful space. There's a reason why we're paid way above our peers for, for most things, um, and a big part of that is the stress, the uncertainty, and so on. So everything I talk about, everything I coach and essentially preach comes from personal experience, the good, the bad, the ugly, that, that type of thing. I've, I've been through the lot. Uh, and I, like most people, I came into sales because I wasn't too sure I wanted to go, but I saw these cool salespeople in, in this team that I was in. I said, what, what are they doing? You know, they get to go out and go and watch the game and they, they get to uh, do all this cool stuff. I know they work hard because they're always in the office or at customer site, but it fascinated me, and I never considered myself a salesperson or, or having that type of skill and so on. Uh, and I, I came into sales age 20 years old, thereabouts, and I struggled at the start. BDR, I would contest, is still the hardest role in sales, you know, rejection 99% of the time and so on. Having to get your head in gear to start again, and then you finally land a, an appointment, and then you, you're back to zero, you've got to start again. So... Going through that, I I found the first three months hard, and then I was really on my flow uh, and really enjoyed it. I was proving a point to myself: "Hey, I can do this. I'm gonna I'm gonna prove it." Uh, I moved up. I was performing pretty well, young age. I moved up into account executive roles and then sort of mid market management and so on. Um, everything was mostly good, you know, on on the front of it, on the face of it, rather uh, hitting quota attainment. Landing partners, landing big deals, some of them that I would come in, try not to be too smug in the office because I landed a big client and so on. And things were mostly very good. However, recall as around age 25, age 26, things start to go quite downhill and quite rapidly for me. So anyone that's been in sales listening to this, you'll know, yeah, quarter end stress is a real thing. Year end stress is potentially an even bigger thing unless unless you're you're way ahead of yourself. Um, and it's just that uncertainty. It's just that that pressure that we feel. Some of it warranted, a lot of it not warranted. You know, your boss is stressed. They don't mean to, but they often push it down to us and so on. Um, and for all of us, we can struggle. Yeah, mental health, physical health, focus, motivation, just drive. All these things start to go at points. Um, but for me, with an underlying medical condition, Age 18, 19, I was diagnosed with something called Crohn's disease, which, if you're not aware, autoimmune disease whereby the body literally attacks itself under pressure, under stress. So, yeah, and a kind of, and, you know, a standard job outside of sales without the targets, the pressure and so on, that's hard enough. And then with all the pressure and, and the expectations and the targets, the sleepless nights, all these things are terrible for something like Crohn's disease. So, yeah, it got to a point where I was performing pretty well ups and downs, emotions, ups and downs, health, mental health, physical health, and so on, definitely ups and downs. And my very well-meaning family doctor literally said to me in those words, Thomas, you ought to find a career where stress is not part of the job, sales is not for you. Um, and so that was really hard. I don't know if it was because I was a young guy. 
I was stubborn. Uh, I still am probably, but uh, I was definitely stubborn and, and young enough back then to say, yeah, I, I kind of hear what you're saying. I certainly trust your advice because I'm really suffering here. And, um, you know, just to give you a, a non kind of too visual example. Yeah, for me, things like turning up to a customer meeting 30 minutes early, I want to be there on time, I want to be there prepared and so on. Um, but knowing that a little bit of nerves, excitement and so on, I would potentially need to use the toilet and, you know, unfortunately, multiple times being stuck on the toilet, unable to get off but without going into details and then being late for that meeting and having a team looking at me like, why are you late? And me just too embarrassed to tell them what was going on. So that's where it got to me. And, um, you know, my, my students will have, you know, we will have our own challenges, but the students that, that have challenges around stress, pressure and so on, all of these things knock that peak performance, which is what I'm always striving for and what we do. Of course, these types of things really majorly impact performance. So it was at that point, and then I can go on. Um, but that was really the point where that's where my doctor said that to me. And that, in the best way possible, pointed me in this direction. So I'm forever grateful, as weird as that might sound, to have these challenges. It helped me kind of know where to focus. And I found what I believe is my true calling and all of this. And here I am today with the Empowered Seller, helping other people up the, the challenges that I've gone through as well. Appreciate like you know you start in sales. I started same same time like 20, 21, and you see kind of you start as an SDR, and then you see these kind of field account executives, enterprise salespeople. You know, typically people in their mid thirties, driving really nice cars, mm -hmm. super nice holidays, nice watches, nice suits, and you think, oh yeah, I, I want that. I want to earn loads of money. You know, I finished uni, no money, loads of debt. So that was like a different world for me. And it, it's all good to start with. You start, and like you said, you kind of, you know, you go through that learning curve as an SDR, like what, what does the tech do? What's the BDR do? Mm. Then you kind of get good at it. And then you start getting a taste for it. And then people, you know, you start getting the credit. I'm assuming people were patting you on the back. Hey, Thomas, you're doing a great job. And then you don't realize the stress building. And you don't realize that you're on this monthly target every single month and you can do it one great month. And it's, it really is a job from like hero to zero, like every single month. Um, and I think for you, it sounds like you had those physical, you know, everyone I think deals with stress in sales. I think that's a given. And then there are physical symptoms of that stress. And it sounds like you have a, you have a medical condition on top of that. Um, so, and going through that, cause I think a lot of people go through that. But I think a lot of people, myself included, I don't think I appreciate or acknowledge I'm going through that at the time. Mm -hmm. It's only like six months after, like, oh, my God, I'm fully I'm fully burnt out now. I'm, I'm exhausted. I don't want to get out of bed. I can't be bothered with sales meetings. How do you, if you didn't have your physical, you know, autoimmune issues here, how would you have found out? What tips would you give to people to like, you know, if they're going down this route before it gets too late? How do you? What are some telltale signs that this is getting too hard? Yeah, that's a great question. Um, and like you say, you know, we can see people going through it. You, you and I can see someone else, particularly someone we're close to that we love or whatever. Uh, but in ourselves, it's very difficult to see these. We're so focused on achieving a mission that we forget actually a lot of stuff contributes to this. And also, is this mission more important than my health or my well-being or my, you know, whatever it is the rest of my life and so on. So it's definitely very hard when you're in that. Um, and like I say, I'm I'm grateful for all the stuff for me because I see the the symptoms that I that when I'm flaring up and you know previously when I was losing weight and so on, that was my early alarm clock. I, I saw before I got to that burnout stage that hey, I'm starting to burn out, and I you know I'm kind of lucky in that sense. Not everyone has that. So for me, uh, I became hyper aware for myself first and foremost that you know Thomas, this you're pushing yourself too hard. Um, your your self-talk is off you know all these type of things i became hyper aware of them because they input in uh you know negative voices overwhelmed from podcasts and, and all the rest of it whatever was happening trying to do too much output yeah losing weight suffering uh, and so on so yeah for me becoming hyper aware so I, I have that advantage i guess but yeah i can tell you my you know my students have certain things and one of them would be self-awareness that's one of the greatest skills that anyone can develop regardless of industry just for a great life if you become self-aware and increase that self-awareness it's a 
you know, I'm never the master of, of that. It's something I'm always looking to get better in. But the self-awareness is probably the most underrated skill trait in for me in anything, and particularly sales. Um, so I, I would say doing everything you can to become self-aware is by far probably the most valuable thing that you can do. Uh, and then I know we may talk about this, but I would also, I'm a big fan of looking into stress. You know, people take it as a given that, yes, sales is stressful. And I, I would say it's true to an extent, the extent that it becomes your reality. It's a perception and it certainly feels that reality and so on. But your ability to deal with it is obviously a major part of it. How does how did someone like Steve Jobs deal with an entire ecosystem at Apple and you know, press wanting to hound him and his own board firing him. And, and then he comes back and leads it into, I think, even before the time of his death, the biggest company in the world and so on. How does someone deal with that? They still have the same body attributes and so on that we do. And so much of that is like mental resilience and so on. So, yeah, I'd love to go down an angle of, of stress if, if we want to as well and the, the two types. And I think that's something that a lot of people are not, well, not enough people are talking about as well. In terms of distress that we're used to, you know, the stuff where our body suffers, the stuff where like going to the gym and you lift too many weights and you can't walk for 10 days and you're injured versus you stress, which I'm sure you're probably with it, the, the type where, yeah, it's stressing our body. We're breaking muscle fibers and they're rebuilding to make our muscles bigger. The same with our brain and our mental resilience. But yeah, we're, we're not crushing ourselves. We're not putting ourselves at a serious injury. And that, that's really how we grow. So it's a mix of those and yeah obviously it's my my subject area I, i'm passionate about so i'll i'll, uh, I'll hold no, back there but yeah there's a lot to talk no, about super because ultimately it's all comes here most most people listen to this and are sales people and sales is all about peak performance right it's and it comes down to and yeah we can talk about top five tips on how to qualify your deal better or how to test your champion or some great prospecting cadences and all that. And there's a ton of great content available. But yeah, I think that people don't talk about how to get you know your head straight. It's a job, yeah, you know, from an SDR you've touched on already, it's 99% rejection. Um, and then when you go into becoming an AE, you're dealing with multiple opportunities. You've got your potential, your boss, your VP of sales, your COO, kind of, you know, they, they're under a lot of pressure from the founders, the CEOs. VCs are putting pressure on the founders. So again, it comes all the way down um, and it, it's stressful. And I think for a lot of people, they don't realize that they should work on that piece. I know a lot of people, you know, go for walks at lunchtime, they get their diet right, they exercise, those sorts of things as well. Um, but, you, you know, there's also that old school attitude of you, you've just got to plow on. You've just got to crack on. It's hard. Just deal with it. Yeah, and this way you'll get that kind of drinking culture after work. But I think this, this still is around. How do you get this? You know, sales is, is very much that you just have to plow on. You have to do the activity. You have to send those emails. You have to visit the customers. You have to deal with that core. Those, those, those don't go away. So there's how... How do you manage that? Like, and you, Steve Jobs is a great example. I was thinking about this recently. Elon Musk, how, how do these people, he just acquired Twitter, he's got Tesla, he's got all these companies, SpaceX. Are these just the, 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 the random one in a billion people, right? Are they just gifted in this certain way they can handle it? Or have they learned techniques to deal with it? Like, what's your opinion on that? Or, or can anyone do it? Are they just like the one in a billion, basically? I certainly spent time looking into these things and asking these types of questions as well. Uh, and I've gone down thoughts of maybe they're just aliens. I'm not sure. It's something yeah. like that. They're so unique. But yeah, I, I do think that some people are exceptional. They're, they're, I, I've just observed it and I don't claim to be this type of person. And this probably is one in a billion that they're so driven and um, yeah, they're, they're so singly driven on a particular mission and so on. And they, they are the ones that are particularly famous, whether it's business, sports, you know, careers in acting and sales and so on as well. Um, but yeah, one of the biggest things I would say is, you know, it, it's about yourself. How are you doing against your own potential? We all, we all have different types of potential from our upbringing to our physical attributes to our, um, you know, our intellect, social intelligence, emotional intelligence, and, and so on. So we all have things working for and against us. And really, again, a big part of my job is to help people recognize, you know, this isn't your natural trait, but this is. This is how you're going to sell because there's a million ways to sell very successfully. 
Um, so how, how do you know how do these people get there, and how do we strive for more of it? So one of the big things that sort of mentioned at the end of your last question about distress, which is where most people are in sales. You know, we we're pushing hard. Why is it at the start of the quarter we're not doing so much? At the end of the quarter we're not sleeping, we're stressed, we're calling the customers, we're probably annoying a few people, but we have to. We you know we've got to push on. You only have to take a step back, and obviously I'm fortunate to have been on both sides. Ten years in sales, doing that, and then years outside of it, working with individuals. So I'm I'm in the the dugout, the boardroom, whatever you want to call it. I'm safe. You're the one being kicked and and shot at every day. I'm here safe with the hindsight and so on. So yeah, I, I'm lucky I get to see these things and I've experienced them as well. But yeah, the, the distress is what we don't want. The same in sports, the same in, you know, whatever it is, you're building something, you don't want to go beyond the point of injury because you've got to recover and can create long lasting damage. And this is where I see salespeople build, you know, horror stories. They remember, you know, last Christmas, I'll give you a great example, one of my, my best performing students at SAP, um, and this is public. We spoke about this in a testimonial video. He came to me and said, my last Christmas was so stressful. I was with my family and all I could think about was work. I never want that again. That was the catalyst. Yeah. Right. Okay. And then we go into it and we, we look at what's going on. And now he'll practice you stress. So finding something that will stress him and, and the good type of stress, basically. Um, and he's doing phenomenally well. 550% at SAP is not supposed to happen at a company that big. So. Yeah. Um, and you know, credit to him, he puts in the work on that. So he pushes himself. He is a great example of pushing, but in the right type of thing, not pushing your body beyond broken, but actually pushing yourself to recover from something and then to go again. And obviously, you know, if I do a hundred of these podcasts, I'll become much more effective and, and much more uh, focused on it than you know, certainly my my very first one way back when, and so on. So. This type of thing, seeking you stress uh, is is phenomenal. Uh, and I don't know if you saw my my LinkedIn page, for example. For me, one of one of the greatest uh, people that I've been fortunate enough to to meet in person to spend a week with him and his team is Wim Hof. I don't know. Yeah. Do you know Wim Hof? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, the, the Iceman. So yeah, yeah uh, some people thought I was crazy. I kind of questioned it myself when I was physically there. But in Poland, in the frozen mountains of Poland, in January a few years back. Um, yeah, hearing about Wim Hof, seeing him just before he kind of, I think he was on Joe Rogan and place like that and then really blew up. But yeah. before that, he was a bit more underground and someone uh, told me about him and I was like, yeah, this guy's really cool. And I heard him talking about cancer and Crohn's disease and all these autoimmune things and saying that, yeah, breathing and cold, like freezing cold water and so on. So I started to look into it more and yeah, very fortunate to train with him and his team day one i'm in the water trying and again this is so applicable to sales which i never expected but it really is i'm trying to push through i'm there in the freezing cold water and i'm saying i you know i'm tough uh, this water is warm and literally under two minutes uh, i my, i'm so you know violently shaking it's enough to to kill someone basically i'm there obviously under extreme supervision and there's people around medical people and so on um and we were kind of left to our own device and I got out and I thought, and I'm biting my tongue because I, I, I can't control my teeth. I were chattering so much. I bite my tongue and it's bleeding coming out my mouth. And I'm thinking, well, I feel like an idiot right now. Clearly mind over matter doesn't work in this scenario. And that was a big learning curve. And the rest of the week they're training us how to deal with it. And I see Wim is like super masculine. He has holds all these world records for, you know, insane things. He's an Elon Musk of, of that world for sure. And I realized by the end of the week, actually, the mindset, the state you want to get in for freezing cold water is not this water is warm. I'm going to whatever or tensing your muscles. Tensing your muscles in that scenario is really bad because it cuts off the blood flow. You start to shiver. Your your blood can't work properly. Your your extremities start to really suffer. You're stressed. You don't breathe. All these type of things. These are all terrible for being in freezing cold water. Actually, what you want to do is be super calm. As hard as it is, be super calm in that moment. And it's so much like me at quarter end. If you can be super calm, which is incredibly hard, then you're going to perform better and so on. And obviously next quarter you want to apply you stress at the start of it you want to dip your toe in the freezing cold water you know so to speak whatever that is um and find ways to build that mental resilience all the time not at the end of quarter when it crashes you 
and it really doesn't do any good for you. Yeah, yeah amazing. Yeah, that's very cool that you went out there. Yeah, and uh, how? So, what you do? You still do the the cold water plunges now? Are you still a, a big proponent of that? Or hey, you know, it's funny. Inspired doing all of this, and anyone knows the story. You're, you're taking up a mountain in just your your shoes and shorts with your you know your backpack on and so on. Snow capped mountain, freezing cold. And uh, maybe by day four, I was slightly acclimatized. I was still pretty nervous. Um, and uh, yeah, I'll tell you the queue for the toilet. Everyone, everyone was queuing for the toilet. We didn't really know what we were doing. We just knew it was going to be painful and challenging. Um, but yeah, day four, going up there, and I'm just getting used to it. And then day five, spending more than 10 minutes in the water. And again, it shocks me. And I think, oh, well, I'm not that spectacular because, you know, most people there did it. And yeah. like some of us had trained before and so on. But yeah, it just showed me, it proved to me in the physical form that all of us are so much more capable than we believe. Um, but yeah, so I, I still have cold showers. I don't do it every day. Um, the, the breathing is something I think is, is uh, undervalued. You know, most people think of the cold and so on. The breathing, whether it's Wim Hof's breathing style, whether it's you know kind of an ancient um, from yoga and, and uh, Eastern philosophy, uh, Eastern kind of breathing and so on, just any type of thing. Uh, but I also believe you know massively in whatever works for you. I'm, I'm not the type to sit there and write journaling. That's not my style. I, I speak out loud, and that's how I clear my mind and so on. Um, and some people, physical exercise in the morning where they're seriously out of breath, that's the best thing for them. It sets them up. Other people to sit there calmly meditate and so on that sets them up so so yeah I, I i'm a big fan of the cold showers but even now i say when i get in i still have to push myself into the shower and then once i'm in yeah. certainly after a minute and then there's a lot of science to this as well the body starts to calm down and then you actually experience a sense of um uh, you know a, a real sense of joy it just comes out there and it's a wonderful feeling really fascinating i think i've gone to like Similar career, you know, SDR, AE, VP of sales, you know, managing sales teams. And as I've kind of got, I guess, got older, more mature, whatever, wiser, whatever we want to call it, it's that you start learning how can I deal with stress is always going to be there. It's, it's inevitable. I think in any job as well, it's not this isn't specific to sales. It's kind of like how it's identifying what's the root cause. Why am I getting wound up like this? Why am I like over amplifying this? issue or this challenge and and for me i've learned you know i've gone through this and now going into a founder building products like hiring technical people um raising vc money those sorts of things and they're a different type of challenge um and what i've learned is that you know this isn't going to change for the next five ten years mm -hmm. so yeah i've got two options one is i'm either just going to be really wound up and stressed all the time or the other is learning techniques um you know i don't journal either but you know going for a run in the morning going for a walk at lunch those types of things i find incredibly helpful yeah. um amazing no super interesting so now kind of moving on you know you've you've kind of went through that journey you've kind of then moved in and you decided hey i want to help other people um and you help salespeople now with the empowered seller mm -hmm. what made you you know an ae role in a tech company of leadership role in a tech company are quite quite well paid you can live a really nice lifestyle starting your own business you're taking that big hit you're taking the risk what made you do that um and that first kind of 12 months 18 months again you've thrown yourself back into a really stressful situation um you've got mortgage bills to pay whatever um what made you want to start your own thing um and did you do anything different in that kind of 12, 18 months that you, you didn't maybe do in the first 12, 18 months of your career? Yeah, that's a great, great question. So I, I, I can tell you, you, you've rightly identified what happened. The first 12 months of, of doing this, yeah, I, I shifted from one to the other. And I felt like I was kind of back at school. I was learning a lot. And, and uh, yeah, feeling, feeling the stress as far as, yeah, I, I've left something very well paying with lots of additional progression uh, opportunities there into something that is very unknown for me uh, and obviously from a financial element yeah a major hit from a delivery element from a, I know what to do every day you know kind of like if I get up and I do this and these are my 10 accounts I know where I'm focusing on I don't know how they're going to react but I know what to so I I went from relative certainty as much as there can be in sales which is pretty low to almost no certainty with that 
Um, and, and in the process also, just again, that self-awareness going through all of that. And also the journey of self-awareness can be really tough. It's not an easy thing. You don't just look in the mirror and say, oh, I didn't realize that. It's you, you learn best from the hardest things, the things where you your weakness are identified and and and, and so on. So that 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 was uh for me that that was going through that again. Um, like I say, BDR is the hardest role in sales. I respect anyone that makes it through, uh, and that's why they're probably gonna make a great salesperson after. Um and, and and in the same way, you know, going through that that first year, I know a lot of people dropped out, and I uh, hands up multiple times on a, even on a daily basis. Sometimes, am I doing the right thing here by going into coaching? But yeah, really, what led me to it was there's a couple of things. So one of them, obviously, my own journey. I felt like I couldn't unlearn what I realized and thinking. I thought it was all about sales tactics, and I've done Challenger and Spin and Medic and. Miller Hyman, I mean, you know, we'll both remember that one. Um, all these great, and I, I'm a big fan of these, by the way. I'm not knocking these. I, you know, it is good when people go through methodologies, but you know, we all know people that use, you know, adopt the, the challenger sale mindset and they do very well. And then we see others, they adopt the same thing, they've had the same training and they struggle. Like, well, why is that? Maybe it's medic, maybe that's what we need to do. And they do well and someone else struggles and so on. So for me. Uh, like I say, I was on the ground, I was on the field being kicked and shot at or whatever. Um, and then taking the Wim Hof story and there's many others, you know, living with Buddhist monks in total silence, which was even harder, weirdly, stuff like that. And I'm, I'm there not to build performance, but to kind of like cure what, what was going on for me. And in the process, realizing, wow, this stuff actually has a massive impact on performance. I'm, I'm excelling from it. And overcoming these challenges, I wonder if other people can as well. And sure enough, it's true. So one was that kind of journey, learning what I learned and thinking, wow, this, this is like the game changer. This works so well with the challenges, with spin and so on. Um, and most people aren't talking about it or realizing it. And then the other side is um, just a, a personality trait, I guess. I, I'm, 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 I'm the type that likes to work very focused with an individual i don't for example i don't coach entire teams because you know we've all been on sales training where we didn't necessarily want to be there um so the individuals that work with me which is why i have such such um you know gratitude and, and praise for them they decide to work with me they, they seek me out and my team my program they, they seek me out they're, they're always growth mindset individuals that's the great thing and it's a pleasure to do it so yeah realizing firstly with my own team as a sales manager, that some of these are struggling with things that I struggle with. Some of them are going through things that I didn't personally struggle with, but I can see because I don't have their stress on a daily basis that, you know, here's the way to do it and so on. Uh, and I'm very fortunate. I, I, I get to share what works from one with someone else and so on. So it, it was a, a mix of those, basically, the, the two together. And and yeah, it, it just kind of landed here. And like I said, I didn't really have a plan. I just thought, I believe I can help people. I have this big mission with the empowered seller. I didn't have a name for it at the time, but it was, hey, the the under the, the missing part of all of this in terms of peak performance and sales and also the, the work life thing. The, you know, I have students tell me that some of the best wins they got are unexpected. You know, my marriage has been the best it's been since seven years I've been with my wife or husband or whatever. So things like that, they're not supposed to happen, but they nearly always do. And, and that for me. It just brings me such joy uh, on top as well. Yeah, amazing. Yeah, I, I I was thinking as you were talking there, I was thinking, yeah, I've probably been on 15, 20 sales kickoffs. Mm -hmm. And it's the same thing every every year. You know, it's three, four days. You know, They might fly you out to Vegas or the US or somewhere in Europe. I mean, it's great to catch up. And it's the same kind of format. It's let's review the year. Let's kind of review some exciting stuff for the next year. You know, they're trying to pump people up. And then they'll kind of go into like new product announcements, new comp plans, um, new sales trainings and things like that. But yeah, I think in all of those 15 to 20 SKOs, I don't think at once they talk about, you know, how to enable that peak performance mindset, how to deal with, you know, stresses, how to improve yourself. I think it's just such a missing element. And that, I think as you were talking, I was kind of like, I think every every SKO should include this type of this program for at least half a day, an hour, whatever, um, just to get people thinking. Um, especially now, I think as, as people get you know, mobile crazy and notification crazy as well, 
you know, everyone's on Slack or they're on you know, their sales forecasting or they're prospecting. So what, what are one of the big things you see? You work with individuals here. Um, so you see all different shapes and sizes, different salespeople, different strengths, different weaknesses. Is there a common, and this is a million dollar question here, is there one thing that you see in, in all, of, all of these people you coach straight away? That you can, actually, I can see this person is dealing with this issue. One simple hack um, should start solving that. Um, mm. is, there, is there something you see that's more common in, in people that you just see every single time? Doesn't doesn't matter. I'd mm. love to know what, what that is. And then secondly, like what, what recommendation do you give those people? What's the kind of takeaway that they can start using like almost immediately? Yeah. Yeah, well, I, I'll make a point on, on what you said there just before the questions, by the way, because I think it's a great point as well. You know, like you, I've been on many sales kickoffs all around the world, and uh, it's really exciting at the start. You get to stay somewhere in a fancy hotel, and then, you know, by number eight or something, I, okay, I'm slightly dreading it. I, I look forward to meeting teams and so on. And yeah, unfortunately, it is, it is you know, it's, it's not spoken about anywhere near as much as it could or, in my opinion, should be. Um, and you made a point earlier, and I think it's a great point as well. You, you've gone from sales manager with great experience to founder, and you know I'm sure you resonate when you become sales manager. Your your sales people become your customers more so than the actual customers out there. So your your focus changes, uh, and then founder, you know, even different. You know, you have even more people and and variables to to overlook and so on, and. You know, I have this great visual, obviously, I can't show you one here, but the the idea being that, you know, so much out there is focused on your interaction with them. So them being how to prospect, how to cold call, how to navigate sea level, how to, uh, you know, work with procurement, how to, you know, impress your boss, how to get a pay rise, how to uh, build a relationship with your sales engineer, your BDR and so on. And all of these things are good, by the way, I'm not knocking them, but chances are you probably have 10 customers or 100 customers you have multiple partners and people bidding to be your partner. You have one boss or maybe a couple perhaps and certainly senior management above. So you have all of these relationships and you know, I'd argue sales is really all about relationships, especially in this space, tech sales. Um, and actually there's one core common denominator in all of those. And you know, you pick this up yourself. It's, it is you, it's you as the individual, you as the salesperson. And this is where I talk about you are the sales machine. You are the one that is out there every day and so on. The hardware is your body, your mind, your, your brain. That's all good. As long as you're looking after yourself to some degree, you've got what you need. The applications, the uh, you know, the, the 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 things you're learning, the methodologies, the sales tools like OneShot and other great tools out there as well. The things you have at your disposal, and the thing that, that most people miss is that underlying operating system. And again, this is where we're, we're talking about now. You're trying to do all of this on Windows 95. It's not going to work. And that's obviously I'm old enough to remember all this pretty well as well. Um, but but that, that's what I see. So seeing all of that, people have this great knowledge, experience, and so on. And again, going through it myself, this all this knowledge and experience counts for nothing if your body, your mind, and so on is not in a great space. So that biggest, single, most important relationship, I would argue, you know, to the, to the end, is is the one you have with yourself. And that is so important. It's also the, the cheat code, the performance accelerator in every realm. And it also makes all of the others different because your boss might leave tomorrow, their choice or not. You have 10 customers. If you focus on just two, the other eight are going to suffer and they'll leave as well. So you cannot spread yourself possibly that, that well without spreading yourself thin. But you focus on yourself and all of these strings attached to you in the middle, then all of these things perform better. Um, so it's a point you kind of talked about as a founder, and I just wanted to make that point as well. Um, that yeah, focusing on yourself, whether it's with us, whether it's with someone else, whether it's just becoming more self-aware, whatever, uh, is is so valuable for for the the sales people out there. So um, I'll get back to your question. If I remember, you were asking, you know, what do I? Did you say what do I see as far as a common challenge? Yeah. What do you see? What do you see as as part of a common challenge? If if you had like 50 people that you were coaching in the next yeah. two, three months, you, you kind of say, okay, this one's going to come up in 49 of them. Every so, All 50 are going to have this one challenge. They, they know about it. They know about it. It's subconscious. It's conscious. Um, what is that most common thing? I think you probably touched on it. It's, it's themselves. It's probably they're not prioritizing themselves, right? 
Yeah. So uh, I would say my my best performing students are the ones with high self awareness. But it doesn't mean they came in with high self awareness. It's just at that point. So uh, there's there's really two camps, and it's almost binary. It's not quite, but it's almost binary. Um, and I have people reach out to me. And, and by the way, if you're day one of sales, you know, you've just started as a BDR, you've just moved into it, then I'm not the guy for you because I, I do highly recommend you go and learn some skills, you shadow someone that's good, you learn on the job, you need to go through some mistakes and some stress. Otherwise, my stuff will just not resonate. But if you've been there for a few years, you'll know, you know, quarter and stress, people are nodding their heads and so on. Um, so they, they get all of this. And also, you know, have, having to have that desire for more. If you're perfectly content where you are and what you're doing, that's totally cool. Um, obviously, again, my stuff might not be for you unless you have that desire to grow in yourself and your results and so on. But really, there are two camps. There's the, the type that come to me and say, Thomas, you know, my biggest challenge is I'm doing quite well, but I face self-doubt or I keep holding myself back or I'm, you know, procrastinating from making the dials, whatever it is, that, that type of camp, but they recognize some of them health issues, physical health, mental health, and so on. Uh, but, but typically, it's something they're recognizing, but they're looking outside in and they're saying, it, it's me, uh, I know what to do, or I, I think I know what to do, but I'm not doing it, or I'm suffering when I'm doing it, and so on. The other side is the type that w- would say, maybe it's an external thing. So I'm struggling to prospect, or my message isn't landing, or uh, you know, my customers, the market, the economy, and so on. Now, neither of those are right or wrong. Obviously, that there's... There's cases for both, but what I typically see happen, um, and and again, sometimes it is the message, you know, sometimes it's good to work on that and so on. But what I typically see happen is when we dig into it and, you know, just for a consult call to people and we were just having a conversation, I'm saying, tell me about this, these prospecting issues. You're saying that your efforts are not working. What are you tried and so on. And then they might say, oh, I've tried different messaging. I've tried different tools. It's just not landing. Um, so what do you think will fix it? Well, I, I think, you know, maybe a different message or should I send video uh, uh, emails and all the rest of it? And again, there's merit to some of those, of course, they work for people. But what I often see is, and, and again, their self-awareness comes out, is they'll, they'll realize and I'll say, how many times a day are you making that call? Are you turning up every day and doing what you need to do? Do you know what you need to do? Um, do you have peaks and troughs in terms of that performance? What are you saying to yourself on that call? You, you said you didn't make that call and so on. And we soon realized that, yeah, again, that person driving all of this, the one until AI replaces us, which I think is a very long time away, by the way, I make that more as a joke, but in this space in particular, um, that we are the ones driving and we do have em- emotional ups and downs, unlike robots. We do have fears of stresses and burnouts and all of these things we do have these desires and frustrations if we're not where we want to go we want to operate like we're at 200 percent of quota when we go and see the board for a big meeting but we're at zero percent we're trying to hide it with our body language but we feel really down we need this deal commission breath and someone comes out so um it's really those two camps but again the the, the students that i work with the ones that will look outward you know look inwards from from the outside and say like yeah these things might be true the economy might be bad but i know if i focus on myself then i can make a real big difference here and i can certainly perform and and that, not everyone wants to do that and and again sometimes other you know training things out there uh, i'd recommend and i've sent people off to sandler and challenger and so on i've said no actually this might be best for you in this moment but yeah, the, the stuff that I focus on is, I would, I would say, is timeless. And it's those two camps that kind of meet in the middle somewhere. Brilliant, brilliant. It's just, you've just got my brain going. I keep I keep self-reflecting as, as you're talking. <laughs> and I keep thinking... I get that a oh. lot. <laughs> yeah, I keep thinking, oh, well, we've done like, I've done, I don't know, 20 SKOs. But the other thing I've done is probably, and, and a lot of people, and you and, and a lot of people, is how many quarter ends have we done? Four a year, that's 40 in 10 years. 80 if you've been selling or even longer if you know depends on how long you've been selling for and that, and one thing we've done a lot of in tech sales is qbrs right these quarterly business reviews and mm. they all have the same format again which is hey thomas how did you perform last quarter this is this is what you forecast this is what you delivered how many cold calls did you make um and actually one thing i think that i i've never done in in a qbr where i look back and I'm like, oh this would have been brilliant to add would have been um 
what stressed you the most during the quarter? Like not just losing, not it's not about losing a deal or misforecasting a deal. It's like how do you feel you progressed like mentally as or how did you grow as an individual during that quarter? Um yeah, and, and improving that quarter on quarter. It's not just I finished 100 percent 120 percent It might be, you know what, I sucked at making cold calls um last quarter. And the reason was I was scared of getting on the phones. I was in an office or whatever. I just got rejected so many times. It gave me anxiety thinking about it. So actually working on that and improving that quarter on quarter, I don't think anyone, anyone's doing that. So I'm sure you you talk to people about it, which is great. So I'm really enjoying this conversation. Just kind of getting on to like the final, final question. Everything's been amazing. I keep thinking, I think off the back of this, I need to reflect and write down a few points as well. Just as a founder, you know, I'm probably more involved in so many different parts of the business and on the ground and management and hiring that um, I think yeah looking just taking some of your advice and just looking at myself spending a few days just working that out would be brilliant mm -hmm. so what yeah and you've touched on this throughout the conversation it's about the individual their operating system their peak performance you work with some great people I think you mentioned that you know, someone you've coached has gone to 550 percent um what you know people listening to this um apart from signing up for your coaching and going for that straight away and they should do that straight away what what are some things they should look for you know if you you bring in someone and you have that first chat with them for an hour 30 minutes they want to improve they know they've got some issues if anyone's listening to this now what would you tell them to go and do now like how would how can they self reflect is there like an exercise they can do um is there something that they can read online? Is there some content? What would you advise someone to who's kind of thinking, I want to get better. I know that I've got a few weaknesses. Mm -hmm. um, and you're really giving them something tangible. What would you tell them to go do? Yeah, it's a great question. And uh, obviously, you've been a sales manager for a long time. You've worked with, I'm sure, dozens or hundreds of, of salespeople. And, and you going through this, you, you've been at the the kind of they present to you type scenario of, of QPRs and so on. So you also have that unique experience to see this. Not everyone does because as salespeople, and certainly for me, I, I didn't have the other side type thing. So yeah, obviously seeing the other side of it and, and being able to reflect on it is, you know, is a, a major um, kind of benefit that, that we we have with that. Uh, there are two or three things I would say, and I'm, I'm a big fan of keeping it super simple because as soon as we start making it complex, um, then that that's where you know, the issues come in, you try and learn 10 methodologies and you think, oh, I wish I only knew one and then I would know what to do because these two kind of conflict and so on. Um, so yeah, keeping it really simple. So one of them is, is just start to reflect even on a weekly basis. And your questions there were great. You know, what is it this quarter that has stressed me? And the natural response to someone, you know, kind of feeling a bit on that, that um, hamster wheel is, well, I lost a big deal and I missed quota. That's really stressing me. And it's like trying to dig a bit deeper, even with yourself, you know, you can do this, um, but you, it requires practice to do it and to say, but why is that stressing me? What is it that, well, I'm worried about losing my job. I'm worried about, you know, how I look in front of my team. I'm worried about not being top of the leaderboard because that's how I identify as, as a winner and so on. And, and so just by learning all of that, and it's probably going to be a painful thing if you're looking at what stressed you. Um, and, and digging that out and say, oh, you know what? I actually, I'm not really worried about losing my job because I know I can get another one, but I am embarrassed because I, you know, whatever. And that's really good to know because that will drive your decisions one way or the, the other. We talk about fight or flight and I, I gave a webinar recently on the, the, the four acute stress responses, fight, flight, freeze or fall. And we all act in a certain way under stress. You know, some people fight and that's talking over customers when, uh, you know, you're trying to get the deal that commission breath comes out flights i see that a lot where someone under pressure you know they need to make the dial so they actually hide they don't make any they start you know doing research on linkedin or whatever they call it being guilty of that myself uh, and, and the other two as well and just by being aware of it what is it that's really stressing me what is it that i'm saying to myself before this i was really nervous before that meeting what was my you know my my physiology how was my body set up and so on just by being aware of these things is going to help you massively. And you've said it yourself. And I sort of jokingly say I get that a lot as well. And again, I, I have uh, coaches and mentors that I've worked with and I'm learning from them. So, oh, I, you know, I'm 
live reflecting and inflecting at the same time as well. So, so that that would be one. And then on the flip side, also, you know, one I have a questionnaire that that um, I ask students to fill in at the start when we start working together. I want to see where they are now, partly from a quote attainment and so on, but more so from them as a person. Who are you right now, and who do you need to become to get where you want to get to? So, yeah, if you're saying these things to yourself, how do you? And one of them is you know, one to 10, and I think we've got 50 questions on there now. It's quite, quite comprehensive. Um, and one of them is, you know, I rarely give myself credit for good things that I do. And most people think outside of sales, you know, oh, salespeople are full of, you know, gift of the gab, they're charmers, they're, they're, they'll sell their mother or whatever, all this type of stuff. And at least in this space, it's absolutely not true. There might be the odd one of those, but most salespeople in this space are great. You know, I, I, they're, they're family people. They, they care for their children. They want to send them to their schools. They're, they're doing cool stuff. They, you know, whatever it is, that, that it's not all about themselves and so on and making lots of money and swindling customers. Absolutely not. So that question, one to 10, one being, no, I'm all good. 10 being, yeah, absolutely. I don't give myself credit. It's shocking how many, not for me anymore, but it was how many people put that as an eight, nine or a 10 and that they don't give themselves enough credit. And that's a big thing. So if you go into a meeting and you're not saying to yourself, hey, I've got this, I've done this before, I'm here and I'm going to listen to the customer. If you're saying I'm not good enough, uh, you know, what do I need to say to impress them? Uh, and I've got to impress my boss and I don't want to fall down the sales leaderboard and so on. Again, you're not going to perform. So going back, what stressed me this quarter and then going the other side as far as, um, yeah, what am I, what am I going to give myself more credit for? And yes, deal wins and so on. But if someone shares a deal win with me, I say, what, what's your input? Why are you proud of that? And I get them to identify and, you know, my students can do it with their eyes closed now because they're used to doing it. But maybe when they're new are coming on board and they're going through it and it's a point of, when it looked like it was going sideways or someone was rude to me or whatever, and I retained my calm or I persevered and these type of things, that's what you can take to the next deal. And that, that's what you can take when you lost it. And so on that, that's proof of building mental resilience. So it's those two. And then the final one, like I say, just go and seek you stress. Um, and particularly outside of sales as well, you know, and it, talking about work life, balance I, I see it now there's, there's no nine to five so we can't balance it. it's the integration so we carry our again another big complaint is um you know i'm struggling to switch off outside of work i'm with the family on vacation and i'm thinking about work i'm at work and i'm thinking we really need to spend more time with my family it's a it's a horrible place and again i've, I've been there myself um so seeking you stress seeking things that scare us we find challenging put us out of breath you know, whatever. For me, I, I, I kind of joked to my team, I'd mentioned this on the call. So uh, when I had the, the the conversation with your colleague before this, when we were talking about, I had a black eye and I said, I just need to address my black eye. I don't typically have a black eye. But I was very fortunate enough, and maybe some people will laugh here on this about how, how you're fortunate. But I was in the ring with a UFC fighter and um, I don't claim to be good. I literally started sparring with boxing and martial arts about two years ago obviously didn't stand a chance and, and he went certainly easy on me. Um, but it was, I came out of that. It was only two minutes. It was super intense. And what it did is straight away, all of my weaknesses in, in terms of my block and so on, I immediately know. And if it was 10 rounds, yeah, I would be in a bad place. It was one round on purpose. And it, you know, we took turns with him, uh, very fortunate to, to work with the master of his craft. Um, but yeah, I came out and I learned so much from that. And the black guy was just for me. I look in the mirror and say, oh, I've, I've grown. I've learned here and I've not really taken any damage. Um, so so seeking new stress, seeking things that, like I say, that scare us and so on. Because when we are under pressure, which we naturally will be in sales, it's, hey, I've done this. I ran this. I did this when I was suffering before. I overcame this. And that that credit thing. That wants to be a one. I, I do give myself credit for th good things that I do, not just deal wins, but you know, being calm around people under pressure, um, coming back when I thought all was lost, and, and and so on. Amazing, amazing. Yeah, I thought you were about to go down like a Fight Club route. You started a Fight Club. <laughs> the others, oh wow, you've really, you've really taken maybe it next year. <laughs> um, yeah, I love this. I think like there's so many. I kind of look back now, and I just wish. In my previous QBRs, I'd kind of implemented this because I think it, you're right. It comes down to why 
it's not about losing that deal or misforecast. You know, there's reasons. There's, there'll be technical sales reasons for that. You know, you didn't qualify. You had the wrong champion. You didn't ask the right question, budget. Um, but they'll, they're, it's actually delving deeper. It's asking, like, why did I? Like, I, I can say from personal experience, you know, when, when I've got an investor update to do, but we're also managing sales and we're hiring or a product feature didn't get shipped in time. All of those things are really stressful. I found for me, just putting it in perspective, writing down, you know, just working on it, being better organized, using a better task management system have helped me massively. Thomas, it's amazing. Thank you so much. I think there's just absolutely some just gold in there. I think it's very refreshing to speak to someone about these topics. I think there's so much, um, so many kind of influences and content out there in the sales world right now. And, you know, with content and AI and sales tactics and these how to write the perfect email and all these great things and some of it's great content. But I think, you know, people don't talk about this enough and, and peak performance of the individual. Um, yeah, I kind of think you're almost like a, a, a high-end performance personal trainer for salespeople um, mm -hmm. and it works in a really cool way. Um, Going to have some really great content on off the back of this as well. So, Thomas, thank you so much. We really enjoyed this. Um, and we'll speak Thank to you, you so soon. Much. Thank you so much, Gotham. It's been a pleasure to be here. And, and uh, yeah, likewise, really refreshing to, uh, to, to speak with you. And, and I've thoroughly enjoyed it as well. So thank you for having me.